sort my chair out. There we go, right. So, still Saturday 17th of December, still going through French whiskey. We've done two from the Warrington Distillery, now we're gonna move slightly, and we're gonna go south-west from uh, Britannia, down to just north of Bordeaux, to a place called, you might have heard of it, Cognac. Cognac, I hear you say, but wait a minute, that's brandy. It is, but there is also a distillery there as well, which is producing this, which was a very kind of notion by Andrew A.P. Butler. Thank you very much for this. Um, and this is a, uh, another French single malt called Bren. Maybe Brené, but I'm gonna guess Bren. Um, and this is a relatively recent um, whiskey brand uh, that were launched in 2012. And the figurehead for Bren is a woman called Alison Patel, who looks like this. Um, now she's actually an ex-professional ballerina who, um, when she um, retired, I suppose, um, got into uh, drinks importing and exporting and ended up joining forces with a um, cognac producer who had already started making whiskey um, and was maturing it in uh, Limousin oak cast. And Limousin uh, oak casts are, are very, very highly regarded casks. Um, and I use in, um, if you, I think it's Glen Livet do like French oak and it's basically Limousin oak, um, is, is a very, very popular type of cask to be using for spirits uh, maturation, but also for wine as well. And um, she joined forces with him and basically ended up discovering that if you then transferred the, the whiskey into casks that have previously held cognac, you actually ended up with an even better whiskey than you were getting already. So, Bren have, um, they've recently, I think it was back end of 2014, um, or was it even 2015, launched um, what's now the Bren 10, which is their first uh, age statement. But this particular one is this one, is what the bottle looks like, just the standard Bren, no age statement, but they now have a Bren 10. Now the problem with Bren 10 is I can't stop thinking of this, which is Ben 10, which is a kid's TV show. So they've got to change the name because otherwise I'm just going to be thinking of Ben 10 all the time. So um, so yeah, so this is French single malt, which is um, again, local barley um, being produced. Now they're actually using the stills that are being um, used to make cognac, but they're using stills to make this whiskey as well, which is then five years in um, Limousano casks and then two years, so it's not like a sixth month finish, this is two years in cognac casks. So you're looking at about a seven year old for the unaged statement. Now they have the 10 year old, you have age statement versions. It was first launched in 2012. Um, Alison herself, her husband uh, Nital, I think his name is, um, have really kind of like dragged this up from the ground. Um, I think Alison literally has been like hand delivering bottles and, and doing all sorts of stuff. Um, I think she's predominantly based in New York now, um, but but she really is the figurehead. She, she is kind of like the face of Brent. Um, so I'm very intrigued to see what this is like because this is um, more akin to kind of like craft distilling and things like that. And this is beginning to make waves. Um, it's, it's making a bit of a splash in America as well. So it's entirely possible that you would have, uh, if you're watching from the US, you would have come across this at some point. Um, over here, uh, it's £47 at Master of Malt that they're selling it for. Uh, that was pretty much the only place I could find it, but um, that's what you'd be looking. So in America, 50 bucks, 55 bucks maybe? That's gonna be my guess. If it's gonna be cheaper, then you've probably got a good price for it. So, let's see what this is like. So Andrew, thank you very much. Now that is a deep color. I still have the Armoric and the Gallic, which are pretty similar colors. And I think the Armoric's slightly younger. I think it's about five year old, but you might be able to see the color difference between the two. Now whether our coloring has been added to this or not, I have no idea, but that is a pretty healthy color. Pretty healthy color already. It smells like a pack of fruit pastels straight off the bat. It's super sweet, it really is. And there is a slight brandy element to it, but it's the brandy richness and sweetness, and it's very, very fruity. There's, there's banana and sultana, and this is like banana bread, like a really thick,
Right, let's try that again. Um, my stupid iPad ran out of space. But I've just watched it back and I don't think it's lost too much because I know when it did run out of space, it hadn't recorded the previous three minutes of me nuttering. So I've got two banana bread uh, and it's like a very rich kind of dark banana bread, kind of like a brown bread with banana when you get almost like a malt loaf character. It's really sweet. It's kind of almost liqueur -y. I can imagine this is gonna really put some people off because it's so intense. It's not too dissimilar to the Starwood Australian that again has real intensity of fruit. It's so sweet though. And it's, it's, it's got elements of um, kid sweets, like very sugary. This could be too sweet for my liking. And I like my sweet, share, um, I like my sweet whiskies. But this is, this is very much I can't. I, I do get that slight hint of, of cognac element, not almost as though like there's some drops in it, but it's it's the the sweetness and richness of cognac ramped up to not even ten. We're talking like a hundred and fifty. It's absolutely mental. It's so sweet, right? And it's there on the palate. Oh God, it's like I've just chucked a load of fruit pastels and I'm just chewing all of them at once, along with a banana. Really banana -y. really banana -y. but a, a very sweet banana. You know those foam bananas? Um, if, you, if you've got like a fistful of them and just shove them in your mouth and would you... It would be tasty if you like that type of thing. To just stick a couple of shots of alcohol in with that mouthful of foam bananas and it's not too dissimilar to this. I like it, I like it a lot. I like bananas, I like sweets, I like sweet things. This is gonna to be too sweet for quite a number of people I can imagine. This is gonna to be too sweet, too sugary. It's not cloying, that's the thing. It's actually, the mouthfeel starts off quite rich, but then maintains that level. And it, it's, it's not got a massive finish, to be honest. What's there is, is this continuation of flavors, but it, it, it tails off and dissipates. And you're left with a a definite foam <laughs> foam banana, not you know foam, not made out of foam, but it's I keep calling them foam bananas. But those banana sweets, you get it, but it's it doesn't it's not overly rich, and it doesn't feel sickly or thick. The starwood was quite thick in texture as well. This mouthfeel is a bit more, a little bit lighter as well. It's just the intensity of fruit flavors that are there. I do like this, but I think some people won't. I think it's gonna be far too sweet. It's gonna be far too banana. That's all I'm getting at the moment is banana and nothing else. It's almost overpowering, um, but I like bananas. Um, it, it's like a kind of, um, not a rum and raisin ice cream, but a whiskey and banana ice cream. It really is, it's very desserty. Be really, really good after dessert. It would probably go quite well after, um, you know, over Christmas, after a big, nice meal, just to finish everything off, as the Starwood was. The Starwood was more um, sultanery and and a, a bit more slightly lighter fruits. This is a bit, uh, this, this is banana and, and not a lot else, and very similar flavors. Slightly tropical, there's some tropical fruits in there. I'm getting a little bit of mango as well mango uh, and passion fruit and bananas so this is more tropical whereas the other one the starwood was more sultanery but it has that intensity so um nigel crew who supplied me the starwood said he was on his second bottle give this a go mate and the price wise is not too dissimilar because i think the starwood was about 46 quid and this is 47 at master mall so if you do like your starwood give this a go because this is along these lines Again, it's close to being liqueur -y. it really is. Um, but it's different, it's unusual. It's, it's stick this in a blind tasting and go, where's that from? People will not have a bloody clue. It would be hilarious, it would be absolutely hilarious because they'd be like, where is this from? Is, is this Glaver? What the hell's, I, I have absolutely no idea. They would not say France. But if they said France, they've either had it before or they've just been a jammy git because there is no way that you'd be able to tell where that's from. And that's a good thing. I like the fact that it's totally unlike, any, well, it's not totally unlike anything because it's not too dissimilar to Starwood, but the two of them are unlike anything else that I've had for the rest of the challenge. And we're on what, 3.30 now? So to stand out, 
is quite an achievement um, and that impresses me and I like the flavours in this but I can fully appreciate that there are going to be some people that are just going to think this makes me feel sick it's so sickly sweet it's so sugary it's so banana-y it's so unctuous and everything like that but I like that I think that's actually a good thing so Alison this is very very interesting indeed and I'd love to see some of the reactions that, that they get when people are trying this at say um, whiskey events and fairs and festivals and things like that because I can imagine there are going to be some people that are thinking it's absolutely brilliant and other people that don't want to go anywhere near it after they've tried it once because it's just it's too intense but it's too fruit fruitily intense that's not even a word it's too intense of fruit and sweetness and, and um, it's not even a sherry sweetness it's a it's a banana kid sweets sweetness and that's not to everybody's taste Fortunately, it is to mine. It's, it's, it's jelly and it's, it's my kids' desserts that they have when, you know, we're trying to keep them quiet and then they go mental because they're sugared up. Yeah, that would definitely get you sugared up if you had enough of that. What an interesting whiskey. What a nice way to finish off the night. I like that. I like that a lot. It's worth trying out. You might not like it, but you might do, and you'll be ha then having a whiskey that is pretty dissimilar to most other things you would have come across, which is always nice and always good fun. Right, that's me done for the night. I need to upload one quite quickly, so I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.